I guess you can call this a private investigator quiz of sorts. What I'm going to invite you to do is put yourself in my shoes. I recently worked a case. I'm going to tell you the details of it. And as I go along, and I'm going to explain every little thing and how I did it, but ask yourself what you would do, how you would do it. Maybe even at certain points want to pause the video and think about how would I handle this and then continue on to see how Larry Kay handles it. Hi, I am Larry Kay with ShadowAnyone.com. I'm the creator of the Investigator's Ultimate Guide series, which is premium private investigator training from someone who's been there and done that. Again, this week, I've been there, done that. And I'm talking like this week, a case that I worked on. Uh, and it really revolves a lot around public records. You know I have the public records mini course. You can learn more about that over at ShadowAnyone.com as well. Here's what I had happen. Put yourself in my shoes. Imagine this. You get the call. A client or a potential client calls and says, "I uh, can you turn around a license plate for me? I have a license plate number. Can you tell me who owns that vehicle? Now, of course, 9 out of 10 investigators right over the phone are going to say no. 99 out of 100 are going to say no. My philosophy is always to say yes. Tell me about what's going on here. And... Because as investigators, if you're not an investigator, yes, we can run license plates. How do we do that? It's through usually through database, data services. Sometimes you can uh, contract directly with the State Bureau of Motor Vehicles or Department of Motor Vehicles. I never used to like to do that. I would always lump it together. I just didn't need another bill, another database, another thing that could be audited. And yes, this stuff can be audited. And while I do everything ethically and legally... It's just, I'd rather just have all of that taken care of in one spot. But we can't just run a license plate for any old reason. It just, no, not anymore, not for 20 plus years. We're way past that now. So uh, there are some reasons you can run a license plate, but most of the time we're not going to be able to for someone who just calls off the street. My philosophy of saying yes and then finding out more leads me down this path, I can say, okay, what other resources, specifically, I'm thinking public records, can I uh, use to get an answer to this person's real problem? Because a lot of times it's not really that they need to know who owns the vehicle. There's a problem behind that. So let's, let's look at this briefly. I talked to the guy. Here's what had happened. Uh, a few days before, he uh, had the tire off the back of his vehicle stolen in an apartment complex parking lot where he lives. Um, he kind of felt like he maybe had seen something suspicious or there was something going on. Well, not even a week later, 3.30 in the morning, uh, he hears something outside. He goes out and he sees a guy tugging on car doors and then he gets into a vehicle. Um, the potential client, the caller, gets the license plate number. The vehicle goes around the corner and he calls the police. So here he is now, He the cops showed up pretty quickly, he said, he points, they went over around that way, and then he goes back into his apartment, doesn't know what happens, and he's talking to me. He thinks, of course, maybe he can somehow retrieve his tire, or this is the guy who stole his tire. That's always dangerous, big warning to you if you're an investigator. People who want license plates turned around, even if it's for a quote-unquote good reason, can be very dangerous. So you're going to get all those calls where the guy sees a cute girl and he wants her address or contact information. Super creepy. Can't do that. Don't do that. Wouldn't do it even if it was legal. Um, you have the people who, they'll give you all sorts of excuses. And the bigger the sob story, here's a red flag for you, the more likely it's a hustle. You know, the more that oh, my kid's this and he does that and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Just FYI, that's a problem there. All right, so now I've got this this guy, and I want to make sure he's not this hero. I don't want to give him an address that he starts going out and stalking or looking around or trespassing, trying to find his stolen tire. And, and as I talk to this guy, this is not going to be a problem at all. Pause for a moment. Think, how would you handle this? What would you do? You've already decided that if you can help him, you will. It's a case you want to take. Now, what do you do with this license plate number? How do you turn that around in a legal and an ethical way to resolve this guy's problem? All right, here's what I did. Because he told me he called the police, I know 
and I teach this in my public records mini course, there's a police run record on this. Maybe, it's kind of unlikely, but there might be a police report if anything happened from it. And there's going to be uh, audio from uh, the police radio traffic of this incident. And that's where I decided to start. I went and pulled the audio from that uh, jurisdiction, that police department at that date and time. And I listened in and everything that he told me lined up perfectly. The police you know, got dispatched on this thing. They arrived. They said, we saw the caller. He pointed it out to us. And this guy had no deception on his part when I'm listening to the raw audio. And here's the thing, though. Almost right away, they air the name of the guy and the street that he lives on, the vehicle. This, it's a red Camry is what the vehicle was. Um, and in this case, I was a little surprised. I, you never know what's going to happen. They actually never ran the plate over the air, which they sometimes will do. And I thought that might be my in on this to, to hear what that plate comes back to. Uh, they didn't do that, but they did name the guy and the street he lives on. Well, that's, as an investigator, all you need. Everything else is, is gravy after that. You can figure out everything else. Uh, come to find out, after you know, the, the caller, the person who called me and the person who called the police pointed out, they go over right away, they see this guy, and within about three minutes, they arrest him for a drug offense. In the car is an unconscious woman. In the car is an unconscious woman. There's a bunch of stolen property, two laptops, some uh, mail packages. I don't know if he was stealing them out of cars or porch pirating them. I, I don't know. They had felony theft charges pretty quickly away and then a handful of misdemeanor charges on this guy as well. I know his name uh, and I know the street that he lives on. I move from there, that little bit of information, over to the municipal court, figuring this is not this guy's first go around. And sure enough, uh, there are some minor violations and misdemeanors and traffic violations in the municipal court. I find uh, a traffic violation, a fairly fresh one. Okay, heads up, investigators. Tell me what you know about this. Tell me what this tells you. The traffic violation was a failure to control. As an investigator, immediately, failure to control, assured clear distance ahead, those types of violations almost always have an auto accident attached to them, right? So I take, and, and from the citation that, I can see the address, so I have a good address on him. Uh, it's a different vehicle, though. But I go over to, at the state level, and I pulled the accident report from that date and time and location, and I find very quickly his. Now, this was about a year earlier, right? But all that information was put there in the accident report. His name, his address, uh, who was riding in the car, what happened, a ton of good information. But in addition to the traffic citation and this accident report, uh, I do now have, and, and combining it with the audio from the police recording, I do have a, a solid address on this guy. I have a name, a uh, criminal history. And also, because this had just recently occurred, let's talk about photos now, images for this person. And I'm not talking social media. I, I, I'm not a social media investigator. I don't like that. I Okay. Sticking with public records... This guy was arrested like 48 hours prior, so I flip over. What would you do as an investigator, right? I go over to the sheriff's booking information. Sure enough, the guy's still in county lockup. Uh, it's a felony charge. It's going to take a, a few days or so to unravel, maybe even longer than that. But I get a mugshot. I get, in addition to all that, some also information that corresponds with my traffic citations, my previous misdemeanors I found, that accident report. So we got date of birth, updated address, and a photo, a mugshot, which clients love that kind of stuff. Man, unraveled all of that from, you know, somebody who comes and says, can you uh, trace a license plate for me? Can you tell me who the owner of the vehicle was? Notice at no time did I have to engage with the Driver's Privacy Protection Act because of the, the to run the plate? And I never honestly did come up with a solid record that says that car is owned by him. But the client didn't need that and didn't necessarily want that. The car, to be honest with you, still could be owned by someone else. A, a parent, a brother, a sister, a friend, don't know, don't care. Neither does the client. This is the guy. Here's what he was doing. Tickled pink. I'm the one who was able to tell the client, hey, you did a great job. You jacked this guy's life up 
because three minutes after you pointed around the corner and said, officer, they're over there, the guy was arrested. The officers go through the parking lot, just FYI, again, listening to more of this audio tape uh, of, uh, of, the, uh, of the police run, they go through the parking lot and find all these cars with a doors ajar and rifled through, and they begin to reach out and contact all these uh, owners. They can come out and tell the police what's missing from their vehicles. Just a wonderful apprehension for the police. Uh, good information for my client. He is so happy, and now he's starting a crime watch uh, in his apartment complex. And he was really surprised because when his tire was originally stolen, uh, he was. He went to the apartment complex as well. You know, he's just a decent, upright guy. And they said, no, we haven't had any problems. We haven't had to call the police on anything. Well, come to find out through my work, uh, he he's quickly discovers, no, this <laughs> the parking lot in his apartment complex is just a, you know, a feeding frenzy for bad guys all over the place. And in fact, the bad guy in this case didn't even travel too far. I think it was less than a mile from where he lives. He's just kind of hunting wherever is convenient for him. He's a knucklehead of a criminal, don't get me wrong, but he was very successful for a long time. Uh, he got out, uh, released on his own recognizance. He's out right now. Uh, he's got a court date set. Uh, just an interesting side note, one of the uh, conditions of his release was no consumption of drugs or alcohol, which, by the way, let me bring that back around, unconscious woman in his car come to find out it's it's a friend of his maybe even girlfriend but she had just drunk herself into unconsciousness they had to call the medics out revive her it was not an overdose this was not a drug thing but uh, all that they so they also charged him with open container as well just a great ending and what put yourself in in, in my shoes for that what would you have done could you have done all of this and and legally and ethically, if, if you have to do it with a, a, an illegal pretext, that's no. That's off the table. Yeah, sure, we can scam this information a, a bunch of different ways, right? But in real life, that's not what happens. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. I, I just would love to hear your feedback on this. If you think this is a video that would be helpful to other people, other investigators, or maybe somebody, maybe you're getting into the field and you have someone who's trying to conduct their own investigation right now, and this might be some ideas to help them, then go ahead and feel free to share this video with them. In the meantime, this is Larry K. with ShadowAnyone.com. Remember, do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing.